Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. Today we're looking at lesson 8.1 and lesson 8.1 is an investigation lesson in which we are going to look at dividing either a whole number by a fraction or a fraction by a whole number. And since this is an investigation lesson, we are just going to look at how to model um, these problems to help us find an answer. We're not going to use the algorithm. We're not going to go through the mathematical steps. All of our answers are going to be discovered by either using fraction tiles, um, which is what you did in class when this lesson was taught to you, or a number line which is the strategy that I'm going to focus on for the purpose of this video because this video is made to help you with your homework and your homework would like for you to use a number line for the majority of your problems. So there's two different types of problems. We're either going to take a whole number, like I said, and divide that by a fraction or we're going to take a fraction and we're going to divide that by a whole number. So I am going to set up the camera and the whiteboard and I'm going to show you a couple of examples of each type. And then as always, after the examples, I will come back to you guys with some closing thoughts for today's lesson. So I will see you in just a second. Okay, in our first example, we are going to be taking a whole number, which in this case is the number two, and we are going to be dividing it into a, or dividing it by a fraction, which in this case is going to be one fifth. So the first thing that you want to do with this type of problem is you want to pay attention to your whole number part and your fractional part. The whole number part is going to tell you how big of a number line are you going to create. So since my whole number is two, I know that I need to create a number line that is going to start at zero and it's gonna end at two. So I'm just gonna create a number line that I think is going to be long enough for me to get to two. So I'm just drawing it about that long. I think that'll be enough. It's gonna to need to start at zero and it's going to be ending at two. I just like to set that up for myself so that I know that's as far as it's gonna go. Now the fractional part of the problem tells me, well, how am I going to divide that number line up? I know it's gonna go all the way to two, but how am I gonna divide it up? How is it gonna be broken down into smaller pieces? And this tells me I'm gonna divide it up using fifths. So I'm gonna start off by doing one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and then five fifths. I'm gonna stop there because we should recognize that five fifths represents one whole so I'm gonna put a number one there just so that I know I've created one hole so far on my number line, but I need to get all the way to two holes. So I'm gonna start that same process over again. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, I'm gonna squeeze that in, four fifths, oops, four fifths, and that's two, and that means that this was five fifths. Sorry, I have to squeeze that in there. Actually, I can just erase it and do it the same way I did the one. So this would be five fifths, which is another hole, and that gives me in total two holes, which is what I needed to do, okay? So that's my number line broken up or divided into fifths, as I've been told to do. Now I need to be able to interpret an answer or a quotient using this number line. So to do that, I'm going to count how many jumps can I make on this number line that goes from zero to two and is divided up, divided up excuse me, into fifths. So I'm gonna do, let me get a different color so you can see it. So I'm gonna see how many jumps I've created. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So by taking a number line, starting it at zero, ending it at two, dividing it into fifths, I've created 10 jumps, 10 spots, 10 hops, whatever you want to call them, however you want to look at them, on the number line. That tells me then that the quotient to 2 divided by 1 fifth is going to be 10 because I was able to create 10 sections in total on that number line. Now, if I want to check to make sure that I've created my number line correctly and I've interpreted my answer from the number line correctly, I can use the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication, to check my answer. And if I want to check my answer, I'm going to multiply my quotient, which is 10, times my second, uh, my fractional part of the problem, which is 1 fifth. And if I'm correct, I should get an answer of 2. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put 10 over 1 just so that I don't get myself confused. And I'm going to multiply going across. 10 times 1 is 10. 1 times 5 is 5. I know that that's an improper fraction. So I'm going to take my numerator, divide it by my denominator. That is a nice basic fact. 10 div divided by 5 is 2. And this matches that so that I know my number line is correct. I've interpreted my number line correct and therefore my answer is correct. So that is our first example in which you're taking a whole number and you are dividing it by a fraction. The next example I'm gonna show you is going to show you how to divide a fraction by a whole number. Okay, here's our second example. And in this example, like I said, you are taking a fraction and dividing it by two. So I've just switched everything around. One fifth is now my dividend. The number two is now my divisor. What doesn't change is the fact that this whole number tells me how big of a number line am I creating. So my number line needs to go all the way to two. So I'm gonna draw out a little line that's gonna represent my number line. I'm gonna put a zero here because that's where it's gonna start. And at the very end, I should end up with two holes on this number line. The other thing that does not change is the fact that I'm going to look at my um, dividend here and it tells me that I'm going to divide this number line into one fifth. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the previous, previous example. So this is going to be one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, which I know represents one whole. So I like to put that there to tell myself that. Then I'm gonna keep going until I get to two holes. So I'm gonna start over, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths. And I'm gonna move the two over since I make my number line a little bit longer than necessary, but I'm not gonna to stress too much about that. So I've now shown myself, okay, I've created a number line. It has started at zero. It's ended at two because the two was my whole number part. I've divided it into fifths because that is the fractional part of my problem. Now that I know that my number line is drawn correctly, on this example, I'm not gonna start counting how many jumps or how many sections I've created in this number line necessarily. Right now, I just wanna look at one fifth of this number line. So if I'm just paying attention to one fifth of this number line, I'm gonna box it here. And I wanna know, well, how much of this number line is represented when I just look at one fifth? So I'm gonna count how many sections in total was I able to create? So I know that there were one, and if you remember from the previous example, we know that there were 10 sections, but I'll count again. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There were 10 equal sections on this number line. And if I look at just one of those equal sections, and there are 10 equal sections in total, that tells me that my answer to one fifth divided by two is going to be one tenth. Not one fifth, but one tenth because there were 10 equal sections on this number line. And if I just look at one fifth, which is this here, of those 10 equal sections, overall, I'm only looking at a tenth of the number line. So in this example, one fifth divided by two is gonna give you a quotient of one tenth. Now that you've confirmed that you have made your number line correctly, you've boxed in one fifth like they've asked you. Excuse my dog. Genesis. No. No. <laughs> Sorry about that, my dog was barking. So what I was saying is now that you've drawn your number line, you've confirmed that it's gone from zero to two, you've divided it into fifths, you've looked at just one fifth out of all the sections that you've created or one one fifth section and said, I am looking at one section and there are 10 sections in total. So I know that one fifth of two is going to be one tenth. You can check your answer by multiplying your quotient, which is one tenth times the whole number part, which is two. So I'm gonna put my two over one just to keep things consistent. One times two is two. One times 10 is 10. I gotta remind myself that that is not in simplest form. I know that because they are both even numbers. 
so I know that they're both divisible by two, and because I know my basic multiplication facts, the greatest common factor between two and 10 is two. Two goes into two one time, and two goes into 10 five times. And now that that matches my dividend, I know that I've made my number line correctly, and I've interpreted my number line correctly to give me an answer of one tenth. So those are your two examples. One was of you dividing a whole number by a fraction. The second one was of you dividing a fraction by a whole number. Both parts of each type of problem tell you what to do in terms of your number line. The only difference is how are you interpreting the number line once you've drawn it out and broken it up into its fractional parts. So I'm going to flip the camera around and come back with some closing thoughts. All right, so those were your examples for today's lesson, lesson 8.1. A couple of things to remember when you get started, regardless if you're dividing a whole number by a fraction or a fraction by a whole number, the whole number tells you how far out your number line is going to go. So if you're using, or two is your whole number, then your number line is gonna start from zero to two. If your whole number is three, then your number line is gonna stretch from zero to three. And how you interpret that number line is gonna be dependent upon whether or not you took a fraction and divided it by a whole number or a whole number and divided it by a fraction. If you divide the whole number by a fraction, once you've divided up your number line based on the fractional part of the problem, you're gonna count how many bumps, how many jumps, how many steps, however you wanna look at it on the number line you've created in doing so, and that number of jumps gives you the quotient or the answer to the problem. If you are dividing a fraction by a whole number, once you get your number line laid out and divided up properly, you're gonna circle the portion of the number line that the problem is telling you to focus on. You're going to count that as one portion of however many individual portions you created when you divvied up your number line into that fractional part or into those fractional parts, I should say. So that is what I have to show you for today's lesson. Remember, since this is an investigate lesson, when you're doing your homework, if you're using this for the purpose of homework, you must show your answer through the use of a number line. There are no other options. But if you wanna make sure that your number line is representing the correct answer, you can always check your answer by using the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication, and I showed you guys how to do that in the sample problems that we had. So. That's it. I hope that this video was helpful for you or helpful to you. If it was, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel so that you are notified anytime I upload a new video for you guys. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.